Now, I mentioned there's a couple of big economic issues around today. There's this APRA investigation into Westpac being formally announced today, and also the calls from the South Australian Liberal Treasurer for the federal government to think about bringing forward its tax cut plans. I was able to put both of those issues to the Federal Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, in this interview I recorded a little earlier. Treasurer, thanks for joining us. I want to ask you first about this APRA legal action against, against Westpac. Uh, is this surprising and how damaging could it be to the bank? Well, APRA's investigation under the Banking Act is consistent with what they said after Austrac issued their statement of claim uh, against Westpac and uh, we'll wait and see how that investigation plays out. As for uh, APRA's decision about the capital requirements uh, for Westpac, that reflects their evaluation of their risk profile and uh, as the prudential regulator they play an important role, uh, APRA, in ensuring that the uh, banking system remains stable. Well, it's a large additional capital requirement, uh, half a billion dollars, $500 million. What does that, that say about their assessment of the risk profile at Westpac? Well, look, uh, that is a statement by APRA that they want Westpac to, uh, to hold more capital. And again, that reflects um, their assessment. Uh, and they've done a pretty good job, APRA, ensuring that our regulatory uh, our system and our, our banking system uh, remains stable, even through, you know, the, the challenges of the GFC and since. Well, I understand this investigation will take some time. As you say, it's under the Banking Act, uh, but it'll look at... Uh the discharging of responsibilities by senior managers at the bank and directors, uh, people are, are on the board. What are the possible sanctions that, uh, that could apply here? Well, APRA has a series of sanctions under the uh, Banking Executive Accountability Regime, which was an initiative of the Coalition Government. That includes significant fines. But again, I don't want to prejudge an investigation or, or subsequent action that they may or may not take. Uh, but ultimately, APRA, ASIC, uh, Austrac, they're important regulators and, and, you know, they will hold the responsible individuals to account. Are you concerned at all about what this says about the Australian banking sector? Of course, the, the big four being the uh, pillars of, of this uh, private economy uh, and have been very steady throughout turbulent times uh, in, in the global economy. Mm. Are you worried about the impressions uh, that this creates about the Australian banking sector? Our banking system remains very stable and indeed uh, it's uh, critical that it continues to do so and we got through the GFC uh, whereas around the world other banking systems uh, faced much more um, significant challenges. Indeed they uh, had higher numbers of, uh, of bad debts and, uh, and, uh, and people um, foregoing, uh, you know, uh, not being able to meet um, their loan repayments. Um, the Australian banking system has served us well, but as we saw through the Royal Commission, um, there has been behaviour that has fallen below community standards. Um, that's why we've taken action on uh, all 76 recommendations of the, the Hain Royal Commission. We've implemented legislation already and will continue to take further actions in the new year. I just want to ask you about reaction to yesterday's uh, budget update. Of course, a lot of concern that the economy is just sort of idling along in first gear, people looking at the need to try and stimulate the economy. There's been a, a lot of attacks, of course, from the Labor Party and other critics. But we learned today that the South Australian Liberal Treasurer, a long-time Treasurer there over a couple of stints, Rob Lucas, has suggested that you might need to bring forward your income tax cuts in next year's budget. What are the chances that you'll be looking at that sort of stimulus? Well, our priority is to deliver on the legislated tax cuts that we took to the election. And as you know, Chris, that was $158 billion worth of tax cuts, and that was on top of the $144 billion of legislated tax cuts from the budget uh, the year prior. So these are very significant changes where we're abolishing a whole uh, 37 cents in the dollar tax bracket. People who earn between $45,000 and $200,000 will pay a marginal rate of no more than 30 cents in the dollar. So we're going to get 
get a flatter, simpler, um, stronger tax system. Uh, the, uh, the tax cuts that we passed through the parliament are now making their way into the pockets of Australians. And if you're a, a couple, one's a tradie and, and another a school teacher, both earning $60,000 a year, then that couple will get $2,160 in their pocket as a result of the tax cuts that we pass through the parliament against the Labor Party's uh, opposition. But now you've got a Liberal state treasurer calling on the federal government to consider bringing forward that tax reform, those lower personal income tax cuts, uh, bringing them forward uh, at uh, next year's budget. Is, is that on the table at all? Can you understand why the state treasurers would want you to do that? Well, our priority um, to restate is to you know, implement the legislated tax cuts. But what I can say to the South Australian Treasurer and indeed to you and, and your viewers is there is significant additional funding coming in to the economy uh, as a result of policy decisions that we have taken. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, the bring forward of infrastructure projects, $4.2 billion uh, worth of major projects in, in South Australia. That includes the North-South Corridor. In Victoria, it's the North-East Link. It's the Tonkin Highway, the Bass Highway, uh, the Princess Highway, the Bruce Upgrade. Bruce Highway upgrade. These are all major projects that have uh, been brought into the to the forward estimates. Uh, we're contributing uh, more than a uh, billion dollars of additional funding um, that we've announced since the election in drought support through a variety of ways, um, income support, but also support for local councils and, and loans to those affected by the drought. And we've made a, a response to the interim report of the Royal Commission into Aged Care with $624 million worth of measures. Uh, and we have announced those um, through the MyEFO process. So there is significant money, $8.3 billion, uh, making its way into the economy uh, as a result of um, announcements through MyEFO. Does this mean that you can rule out bringing forward any of those tax cuts at next year's budget? Well, Chris, we're always the party of lower taxes, not just lower taxes for income earners, uh, but also lower taxes for small businesses and medium-sized businesses. And we've seen uh, the, the coalition successfully legislate a reduction down to 25 cent in the dollar, um, the tax rate for... Uh, small and medium-sized businesses with a turnover of under $50 million. That's more than 3 million businesses employing around 7 million people, uh, and that's significant on top of the extended instant asset write-off. So you won't be ruling, in, so you won't be ruling out bringing forward tax cuts at this election? That's, those sorts well, of things are still under consideration? Well, well, look, the Australian people saw very clearly the contrast in the two political parties at the last election. We were proposing tax cuts, which we've now legislated. The Labor Party wanted to, to wallop the Australian economy with $387 billion of higher taxes. Anthony Albanese and Jim Chalmers still have those taxes on the, on the books. So while they talk about bringing forward tax cuts that they opposed in the first place, um, they forget that they were going to hit the Australian economy with a retirees tax, a housing tax, a new superannuation tax, even higher income taxes, as well as taxes on family businesses. That's what the Labor Party's solution to the challenging economic times were. Higher taxes, we're the party of lower taxes. But now you have a Liberal state treasurer saying bring forward your income tax cuts. Uh, not on the table? On the table or not? Again, our focus is on implementing what is legislated. But what the uh, mid-year economic update shows that the country is now living within our within its means and that we're delivering $23.5 billion uh, worth of uh, surpluses uh, over the forward estimates. That's what has been forecast uh, in yesterday's document and importantly in 1920 we'll be delivering the first budget surplus in more than a decade and that's through very prudent and conservative uh, commodity price assumptions, that's through disciplined approach to, to spending, and that's without increasing taxes. That's what the coalition are, are on about. We're on about disciplined, economic, considered decision making uh, and economic management, and, and that is going to uh, produce a dividend for the Australian people. Josh Frydenberg, thanks for joining us.